Yeah, God is in the house this morning. Wow. Isn't that great? Isn't it good to walk into a church that's just alive? I love it. I love you people. Gosh. Can we just sit in this for a while? I got, I got 15 minutes to give you a, a three and a half hour sermon. So, because I'm just, there's, we just got a great word for you this morning, and um, I just want you to realize I recognize what time it is. That's all I was saying. Um, so it is, it is we, we started this series last weekend called Thrive, and it's, we, we've been walking through, and we're going to continue next week as well. This is a three-week series. Actually, we're going to move it all the way. Some of what we're going to do the week, the Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend is also going to connect with this. And uh, it's so we've got like four weeks here of talking about what it means to move from just surviving to thriving. And here's, what, here's where it really counts. And I think here's where oftentimes it really matters for us is when you see something going on, you feel a hurt and you reach into your pocket and there's nothing there, right? And you're like, oh gosh, I wish I just had some margin in my life. I wish I, I just had a little extra in my life so that I could do something right now because I would love to do something right now. And I believe if, if we're not moving into a place of having that kind of margin, that kind of extra room in our lives, then that, those moments that God presents to us are going to fall flat for us. I don't want to be that kind of people. I don't want to be that kind of church. I want us to be the kind of people that are following God and listening to his voice at a moment's notice because there are those occasional moment's notices, right? We get them. We get those occasional moments when God just puts somebody right in front of our face and, and it's time to help and it's, it's now. And I believe God does that for us. I believe God moves us into those kinds of moments. I believe that when we pray, Lord, use me, which is a really dangerous prayer, by the way. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayer. God, use me. That's a really dangerous prayer because God's like, are you sure? Because I got some stuff I can do. If you're serious about this, God is like, I got some stuff I can do, but there's no margin in your life, and so how am I going to use you? And so I want to talk about what that looks like for us to move into a place of margin as we look at a passage in Matthew, because there are some really phenomenal passages in Scripture that talk about this kind of margin and building this kind of understanding and what it looks like to have this kind of mindset. And what I really love about this, here's what I really, really love about this book, is, is Jesus is talking to, this is, this is red letter stuff. In my Bible, if it's Jesus, it's, it's printed in red print. And so this is red letter stuff, and this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to, to people about what it looks like to be kingdom people to be kingdom people 2,000 years ago. And we're like, well, that was 2,000 years ago. It wasn't everybody kind of like better than we are today. And, and no, this is the same kind of people, the same kinds of problems, the same sorts of issues that, they, that we're facing today, they were facing back then. They were chasing after the same kinds of stuff, the same dreams, the same finances, you know, jobs, family, all the same stuff that we chase after, right? And Jesus is talking to them in the middle of, our situation like we live it today. And so make sure you, you don't disconnect this book too far in your life because what he's saying to them, he's saying to us. Because people are people, right? We're really no different than what those folks were back then. And so he's looking around himself and he says a few, I'm just going to read a few verses. Nine, verse, um, in chapter 6 of Matthew, so if you've got your app on your phone or whatever, we're going to have it on the screen if you want to follow along in a Bible, you can pull the one out under the chair in front of you. You're welcome to do that. But I just I want you to hear just three verses that Jesus is teaching in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, 20, and 21. I want you to see what he's saying and, and what's going on here. Here's what he says. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Let me just stay there for just a second uh, on that passage. Look at what he's saying. Don't let something from inside destroy, Right? The internal things like moth and rust, those are, those are the internal things. And don't let something from the outside come in and steal it either, right? Don't, don't store up stuff that can be stolen from the inside or, or taken from the outside. And so he kind of makes sure he's covering all of his bases, right? He's like, don't, just, don't store up treasures that are just going to fail or be stolen. Let's take it on to the next verse. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, this is, this is, a, 
Do me a favor and read this with me. Can we just read, all read this out loud together? Let's do this because I think this is powerful. Let's begin. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Now see, that's convicting, right? That's a convicting statement because it, it, there's a, a, a reality and a truth to that statement that just cuts deep into who we are because we know that there are sometimes that we invest our hearts in things that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. And that's what he's addressing here. He's saying, look, if we're going to be about the kingdom, then here's what I want you to do. Your treasure, he's not talking, notice he's not talking about money. This is not a money sermon. Isn't that great? <laughs> that's right. Because if it was, half of you would get up and leave. All right. Actually, next week is kind of a money sermon. Please come. I, didn't, I just realized what I just did. I just made sure the room was going to be half empty, right? Oh, gosh. Um, we're actually going to talk about what it looks like to make investments into the kingdom next week, financially investing into the kingdom so that it lasts forever. And we're going to talk a bit more. But we needed to talk about this first. Because, if, because you see, we're so caught up. We're not any different than them. We're so caught up in this thing of, of how much we have. We're the only people that put TV shows on that focus on hoarding, right? I mean, we're a wonderful country of storage units and garages we can't park our cars in because we have so much stuff, right? I mean, it, I'm going to tell you something you already know. If we're not careful, we can make a god out of the earthly things that we've made into treasures. We can be so invested in the stuff that we think that's what it's all about. And, and I think we all run this risky line of saying it's all about my treasure, it's all about my stuff, it's all because we spend so much of our energy and so much of our time and so much of our resources either collecting stuff or earning the money to collect it or protecting it in some way, right? And Jesus is saying to us today, like he said to them, look, it's not, it's a, it's not about that. There is another treasure. But if you get caught up in that, it, it's going to ruin you. I mean, we're, we look at the world that we live in, and it's always about wanting more. And, and let me just say this to you. I, I know what it, that means to want more. I, I think we all want more. But here's the thing. More is never enough. When is it enough? I mean, what is it enough that, that families are falling apart and divorce is happening because finances is one of the top reasons listed for divorce in America today? Because we've placed treasures, earthly treasures and earthly stuff. Have, have you been to one of those funerals in, where the family is fighting over the stuff that's left? Oh, oh my gosh, it's painful. Because it's all about the stuff. And have you seen how we have said that other things are more important and other things are more valuable than anything else? And how that gets lived out. And Jesus is saying, look, whatever that storehouse is, whatever your treasure is, that's what you value. Whatever's in the storehouse, whatever you are packing up, whatever you're hoarding up, whatever you're holding on to, whatever you're saying, that's important to me, that in effect is what you're saying is valuable. And here's what we know. Valuable stuff on this side of heaven doesn't last. Valuable stuff on this side of heaven is not going to make it on the other side of heaven. Last week we said very clearly there's a passage in the Bible that says you come into the world naked, you're leaving naked. Which is a little embarrassing for some of us to think about that, right? But the reality is it means we're not taking any of the stuff we have with us. I mean, you might have the clothes picked out that they're going to lay you in. But we're not taking anything with us. There's no U-Haul on the back of the hearse. Even if they bury it in the ground with you, you still can't take it with you. You're going to heaven with, only with your heart. And here's what I also know, that the only thing that's going to be in heaven are the people who love Jesus. I mean, the rest of it is, it says very clearly that the rest of it's just going to, moth moths are going to eat it and rust is going to destroy it. I mean, we all know 
right? We see evidence of it all the time. I am amazed at how quickly, how quickly things deteriorate when you don't take care of something, right? I'm just amazed at that. I'm amazed at how quickly, if a building is left abandoned, how quickly it will deteriorate. I'm, I, am, I just think it's amazing how quickly things on this earth deteriorate, and yet we will spend so much of our time and resources and effort into stuff that deteriorates. I mean, at one point, that car was somebody's valuable vehicle, right? I mean, somebody couldn't wait to buy that car, right? Somebody was like saving up to buy that car. I mean, I wouldn't buy that car. Maybe the Volkswagen beside it. I don't know. But to somebody, that was important. But, the, but it highlights the fact that, that the treasures of this earth are just temporary. The treasures, I want you to write that down. If you've got your teaching notes out, this is, the, this is another one of those things we love for you. You just write things down because we remember stuff that we write down. But the, the stuff of this world is just the temporary stuff, right? But we all know people who are like, oh, do you remember the good old days? You remember the good old days? We actually have phrases like that, and, and there's another phrase that we actually use. They don't make things like they used to. That's a phrase we use, right? We use that phrase, especially some of the old-timers in the room. Some of us are like, they don't make stuff like they used to, man. I mean, refrigerators, five-year warranty. Good luck, right? I mean, there are some people in the room, I guarantee you, just by percentages, there are people in the room who have an old refrigerator from Grandma's house still chugging along in the garage or down in the basement. It's the backup, right? And you still got it because, those things, because they don't make them like they used to, Right? I don't make stuff. like I have some of my grandfather's tools. I use those. Because they don't make stuff like they used to. That's, but we talk to people like, you know, you go to class reunions or you go to events and people are like, oh, you remember what, how it used to be? And there are people who are like, that was the heyday, that was the big time, that was, you know, back in aught eight. I don't know when I was... Back in, you know, back in the day. Remember back in the day? I, I, I used to, I spent a lot of time training and working at one point in my life. And I get together with some of these guys today. Here's a picture of the guys I used to train and work with. I was a semi, we call it semi-pro bicycle racer. And this was the team I raced with. And uh, we raced up and down the East Coast. I'm the third guy standing from the right with the really big glasses and the, the headband. This is the 80s, man. This is, I'm not the only one there with a headband. Come on. I mean, right. Um, they don't even make bicycles like that anymore. But the guys want to sit around and talk about, oh, you remember that race? Oh, you remember that day? Those days are gone. I don't even know what happened to the bicycle that I used to race on. It was... It's gone. But, you know, we, we, the caution for us is to sit back and think that was the treasure, right? That the, those were the treasure days, the glory days. I want to invest in stuff. And the thing is, stuff goes. That was 30-some years ago. Wow, that hurt. <laughs> Just to say that. Oh. When we put so much, I mean, I used to work a full-time job, come home, get on a bicycle and ride two to three hours in the, every, every evening to train for weekend races where, where we'd go up and down the East Coast racing. I mean, it was crazy, crazy. I would never do that again. I mean, my son was at his first bicycle race, ten, he was 10 days old. It'd shoot me now if I would go back and do that again. I think I'd be, I would hope I'd be a little wiser I hope you'd be a little smarter with my treasure, right? Because here's the thing. Acquiring earthly treasures, doing earthly stuff, making sure that I've got everything set, everything cared for, everything qualified, everything quantified, all my retirement, everything done, that's not the first priority of our lives. Our first priority is, to making, sure, is making sure that you're going to be on the other side of heaven when that day comes. And that everybody you know is going to be with you. That's got to be our first priority. Earthly treasures cannot be our first priority. It can't be. Let's get our mind adjusted to that. We need to start asking the question, what do I want? What do I need? Do I really need that? 
do I really want that? Sometimes our wants rule over our needs. Like, you know, I really want a newer car. I really would like to have a nicer house. I'd really like to have a nicer family. I'd really... <laughs> so, so, come on, some of you just went, oh, yeah, I don't know, right. Like to have a nice, I want a nicer job. Do you need a nicer job? Maybe. I don't know. What is the want and the need? Like, it comes down to the chocolate chip cookie this morning. I know. I don't, just, Julie was at the Sisters of the Heart yesterday. Sisters of the Heart, fantastic ministry we have here. It's, it's a secret ministry or secret sister kind of thing. And all year long, you do these little gifts and stuff for your secret sister, your sister of the heart. And you just drop things off and you, you, know, you, you sit them out here on a shelf with the person's name on it and that kind of stuff. And, and so yesterday was the reveal. Everybody got to see who their secret sister was for the last year. And, and so it's great ministry. If you want to be a part of it, you can. There's sign-up sheets out there. You can sign up. You can put it out there. And Natalie, Fox, Natalie Oswald gets those, and she processes them. She'll be in, in touch with you. You can become a part of that. It's great ministry. It's just women taking care of each other privately and surprisingly. It's kind of a neat thing. And, and so, but here's the problem with that. A Ziploc bag full of chocolate chip cookies was on the countertop this morning because my wife was there and she brought those home. So, you know, that looks like breakfast to me. Right? I mean, what I want, what I need. So where are our priorities? You know, because here's, here's, here's the priorities. Okay, maybe not for you, but here's the priority for somebody. Take a look at this picture. Here's the priority. Big house, nice cars, right? Wow, Ferraris. Can, can I have one? He's got four. Can I have one? How about if you just get, you give me one and you'll have three and we'll be all set, right? Want, need, kingdom of God, what's going to last forever? Because here's the thing. Those cars are going to look like that other one someday, the rusty one, because that's how it works. That's what happens. So here's what we need to do. We need to shift our brains, as Jesus is calling us to do this, shift our brains to treasures that are going to be stored in a kingdom way, not in an earthly way, things that will last, because the only thing that's going to last are kingdom things. And in my mind, in my understanding of this book, over and over again as I have read it, Here's what it says. The only thing that's going to last are people. You and me, we're, this is it. At some point, Scripture says even the world is going to go away. Even everything is going to change. Everything that we know of right now is going to look different. The only thing that's going to last is people. And the only treasure you're going to have are those who go on ahead of you or those who follow you because of your testimony and your witness in the world. That's the treasure that's the kingdom thing. And so the question is, are you investing in a kingdom enterprise? Are you doing something that's kingdom size? We've got a baptism today. I'm, work, I'm talking as fast as I can, I swear. I just jumped, I just jumped like four paragraphs right here. Because I hear that. I hear it. I hear it. She's calling my name. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Great, I love it. She's such a cutie. Um, I'm working hard, Fiona. Come on, give me a minute. All right, so before Jesus, let me just give you the next teaching note. Because here's the deal. Here's, I really want to get to this. We're going to talk more about it next week and the following week as we give thanks and celebrate Thanksgiving weekend. But here's the thing. I mean, Jesus, before Jesus ever talks about money, he talks about our hearts. Where's your heart on this? Is your heart kingdom-minded, people-minded, or is it just about stuff? Is it just about gaining stuff? And Jesus was talking to a group of people who were gaining a lot of stuff in his day, the same kind of people like us. And he said to them, look, you can't take it with you. What are you going to do to invest in people? People matter. People are the things that are going to be in heaven with us for an eternity. This lifetime is so short but eternity is forever, and I think our investments need to shift and start thinking about how we're going to make sure that eternity is full of the people we know and love. I want to make sure of that. 
with you, with my family, with the people I love. I think if that's our priority, then we've heard this passage and we started to live it out. Amen? All right. Lord, God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your blessings and the way you challenge us to live out your word. Help us today, Lord. Help us today to shift our minds because, Lord, we all want stuff. There's stuff we all want. But recalibrate our minds. Get us back into that place, Lord, where we want what you want, not what we want. We want what you want to, to invest in us, not our own personal investments. So help us, Lord. Help us to do that today, to have that mind shift today so that we can be about your kingdom work and about eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.